To sing a song that old was sung, from ashes ancient choruses come. Assuming man's infirmities to glad your ear and please your eyes. It hath been sung at festivals. On ember eaves and holy ales. And lords and ladies in their lives have read it for restoratives. The purchase is to make men glorious. You born in these latter times, where wits more ripe except my rhymes. And that to hear an old man sing, may to your wishes pleasure bring. Life would wish, and that I might, waste it for you like paper life. This Antioch, then, Antiochus the Great, built up this city for his chiefest seat, the fairest in all of Syria. I tell you what mine authors say, this king unto him took a peer, who died and left a female heir, so bucks and blithe and full of face, as heaven had lent her all his grace. With whom the father liking took, and her to incest did provoke. Oh, no! Oh, 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 oh. Bad child, worse father, to entice his own is too evil and should be done by none. Beauty of this sinful day made many princes thither frame to seek her as a bedfellow. Which to prevent he made a law to keep her still and men in awe, that whoso asked her for his wife, his riddle told not, lost his life. So for her many, a wife did die, as yon grim looks do testify. What now ensues to the judgment of your eye? I give my cause. Who best can testify? Young. Why should this change of thoughts, the sad companion, dull-eyed melancholy, be my so used a guest as not an hour in the day's glorious walk or peaceful night? The tomb where grief should sleep can breed me quiet. <laughs> Here, pleasures court mine eyes, and mine eyes shun them. And, and danger, which I feared, is at Antioch, whose aim seems far too short to hit me here. Yet neither pleasure's arts can join my spirits, nor the other's distance comfort me. It follows me. The great Antiochus, against whom I'm too little to contend, since he's so great, can make his will his act, will think me speaking, though I swear to silence nor boots it me to say I honor him if he may suspect I dishonor him. And what may make him blush in being known, he'll stop the course by which it might be known. With hostile forces, he'll o'erspread the land and with the extent of war, will look so huge amazement shall drive courage from the state. Our men be vanquished ere they do resist and subjects punish that ne'er thought offense, which, care for them, not pity of myself, whom no more but as the tops of trees which fence the roots they grow by and defend them. Makes both my body pine and soul to languish, and punish that before that he would punish. Joy and all comfort in your sacred breast. And keep your mind till you return to us, peaceful and comfortable. Peace, peace, and give experience tongue. They do abuse the king, not flatter him. For flattery is the bellows, blows up sin. For now the wind begins to blow. Thunder, Thunder up up and deep, deep snow. Make such unquiet, the description house him safe is wrecked and split. And he, good prince, having all lost, by waves from coast to coast is tossed. All perishing of man, of pelf, may not escape it but himself. Till fortune tired was doing bad, threw him ashore to give him glad. And here he comes, what shall be next? Pardon, old chorus, this long's the text. It sees your eye, are you angry stars of heaven? Wind, rain, thunder, remember earthly man is but a substance that must yield to you. And I, as befits my nature, do obey you.
clasp, one clasp. Is this wind westerly that blows? Uh, uh, southwest. When I was born, the wind was north. Was it so? My father, as nurse said, did never fear but cried good seamen to the sailors, galling his kingly hands, hailing ropes, and clasping to a mast, and George a sea that almost burst the deck. When was this? When I was born. Come, come, uh, say your prayers. What mean you? If you require a little space for prayer, I grant it. Pray, but do not be tedious, for the gods are quick of ear, and I am sworn to do my work with haste. Why will you kill me? To satisfy my lady. Why would she have me killed? Now, as I can remember by my troth, I never did her hurt in all my life. I never spake bad word, nor did ill turn to any living creature. Believe me, la, I never killed a mouse, nor heard a fly. I trod upon a worm against my wheel, but I wept for it. How have I ascended where in my life might give her any profit or my death imply her any danger? My commission is not to reason of the deed, but to do it. You will not do it for all the world, I hope. You are well favored and your looks for show you have a gentle heart. I saw you lately when you caught hurt in parting to that fought good sooth, it showed well in you. Do so now. Your lady seeks my life. Come you between and say, poor me the weaker. I am sworn and will resolve. Hold, villain! A price! A price! Half part mates! Half part! Oh, come! Let us have her aboard suddenly. Stop! 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 Let me go! Those roguing thieves serve the great pirate Valdes, and they have seized Marina. Let her go. There's no hope she will return. He swears never to wash his face, nor cut his hairs. He puts on sackcloth and to sea. Ah! Why, who is can it be undone? Oh, Dionysus. Such a piece of slaughter the sun and moon near looked upon. I think you'll turn a child again. Were I chief lord of all this spacious world, I'd give it to undo the deed. Oh, lady, much less in blood than virtue get a, a princess to equal any single crown on the earth. The justice of Gaber. Oh, villain Leonine, whom thou hast poisoned too. If thou hast drunk to him, tid been a kindness becoming well thy fact. What, what canst thou say when noble Pericles shall demand his child? She is dead. <laughs> Nurses are not the fates to foster it, nor ever to preserve. She died at night. I'll say so who can cross it. Unless you play the pious innocent and for an honest attribute, cry out, she died by foul play. Go, go to. Well, well. Of all the faults beneath the heavens, the gods do like this the worst. <laughs> Be one of those that thinks the petty wrens of Tarsus will fly hence and open this to Pericles. I do shame to think what a noble strain you are and how coward a spirit. To such proceeding, whoever but his approbation added, though not his prime consent, he did not flow from honorable sources. Be it so then. <laughs> Yet none does know but you how she came dead, nor none can know. Leonine being gone, she did disdain my child and stood between her and her fortunes. None would look on her, but cast their gazes on Marina's face while ours was blurted at and held a malkin. Not worth the time of day. It pierced me through. And though you call my course unnatural, you not your child, well loving, yet I find it greets me as an enterprise of kindness perform it to your sole daughter. Heavens forgive it. And as for Pericles. What should he say? We wept after her hearse, and yet we mourn. Her monuments and epitaphs and glittering golden characters express a general praise to her and care in us. At whose expense tis done? Thou art like the harpy, which to betray dust with thine angel's face, seize with thine eagle's talents. And you are like one that superstitiously doth swear to the gods that winter kills the flies. Yet I know you'll do as I advise. Girl, if thou dost look like patience, gazing on king's graves, smiling extremity out of act, 
What were thy friends? How lost thou them? Thy name, most kind virgin, recount, I do beseech thee. Come, sit by me. My name is Marina. Oh, oh, I am mocked. And thou by some incensed god sent hither to make the world laugh at me. Patience, good sir, or here I'll cease. Nay, nay, I'll be patient, I'll be patient. Thou little knowest how thou dost startle me to call thyself Marina. Name was given me by one that had some power. My father and a king. How, how, a king's daughter and, and called Marina? You said you would believe me, but not to be a troubler of your peace, I'll end here. Flesh and blood, have you a working pulse and are no fairy? Motion will speak on. How came you to these parts and wherefore called Marina? Called Marina, for I was born at sea. At sea? What mother? My mother was the daughter of a king, died the minute I was born, as my good Norse Lycorida hath oft delivered weeping. Oh, stop there a little. This is the rarest dream that ere dull sleep did mock sad fools withal. This cannot be. My daughter is buried. Motion, well, well, speak on. Where were you bred, and how came you to these parts? I'll hear you down to the bottom of your story and never interrupt you. You scorn, believe me, t'were best I did give o'er. I will believe you by the syllable of what you shall deliver. Yet, yet give me leave. How came you to these parts, and, and where were you bred? King, my father, did in Tarsus leave me, till cruel Cleon with his wicked wife did seek to murder me. And having wooed a villain to attempt it, who having drawn to do it, a cruel pirates came and rescued me, brought me to Mytilene. But, but good sir, whither will you have me? Why do you weep? It, it may be you think me an imposter, no good faith. I am the daughter to King Pericles, if good King Pericles be. Ho, oh, Helicanus! Cause, my lord? Thou art a grave and noble counselor, and most wise in general. Tell me, if thou canst, what maid is this, or what is like to be that, that thus hath made me weep? I know not, but here in this regent, sir, of Mytilene, speaks nobly of her. Never tell her parentage, being demanded that she would sit still and weep. Oh, Helicanus! Strike me, honored sir, give, give me a cash, put me to present pain, lest this great sea of joys rushing upon me, or bear the shores of my mortality and drown me with their sweetness. Oh, come hither, thou that begetst him that did, did thee beget, thou that wast born at sea, buried in Tarsus and found at sea again. Oh, Helicanus, down on thy knees and thank the gods as loud as thunder threatens us. Marina. What was thy mother's name? Tell me but that, for truth can never be confirmed enough, though my doubts did ever sleep. Uh, first, sir, I pray, what is your title? I am Pericles of Tyre, but, but tell me my drowned queen's name, for the rest you have said has been godlike perfect. The heir to another and kings, like to Pericles, thy father. Is it, is it no more to be your daughter than to say my mother's name was Thaisa? Taisha was my mother, who died the minute I began. O oh, blessing on thee! Rise, thou art my child. Give me robes, Helicanus, mine own. Mine own. He shall tell thee all, when thou shalt kneel and justify in knowledge. She is thy very princess. Who is this? Sir, tis the governor of Mytilene, who hearing of your melancholy state, did come to see you. I will embrace you. Oh, give me fresh garments. I am wild in my beholding. Oh, heavens bless my girl. 